What's going on guys? Chatty CRC back with you here on the channel. Today this video is going to be all about setting up the Baby Hawk R. I've had the Baby Hawk R for, I don't know, a little over a week, maybe two weeks now. And I finally got the right cables and plugs in and some batteries for it. And so, still can't fly it because of the polar bomb cyclone or bomb polar cyclone or whatever. The thing that's killing us all in this country and killing our flight time. But what we can do is we can get it all ready to go. So we're going to bind up. We're going to take a look at the insides here. We're going to hook it up to Betaflight. See what the OG configuration looks like on it. And if there's anything that we might want to change. So let's get going. So what we're going to need here is a 1.5 millimeter driver. And we are going to loosen these screws here in the front. And... There's two screws in the back here. I got them right here that we're gonna take out and that will give us access to all of the insides by lifting up the canopy. So when you're removing the canopy, you definitely wanna be careful. It's kinda of hard to get it to slide up, so it's easier just to kinda of pop it off, I think. And once you get everything off, you can see that we have Inside here we have the little OSD extension cable hanging. We've got our antennas We've got our free sky receiver here. We've got the VTX um, Kind of looking at everything It's kind of just I mean honestly, it's kind of sloppy I mean I, I would it, for them to get the canopy to fit and work and everything you can kind of see how Things are kind of just you know the standoffs are kind of crooked. They're not really the right size they just kind of like made it work which is okay I guess um, but you know I guess if we're paying for a premium product you know this is something that like I really wouldn't expect out of Emacs this is something maybe I would expect out of something that you get from Banggood but I guess you got to do whatever you have to do to make it work right so binding with the Tyrannus is pretty simple. You just Everybody knows how to do that. We're gonna actually be binding this in D8 mode. And if there's a little button right here on the side that you're gonna hold in and do the whole balancing act of plugging in your battery. And once you do that, you will get a solid green light there. So we are bound up and ready to go. Everything's powered up. You can see the VTX is flashing through its little things, and that's it with that. So if you look through the instruction manual, it kind of gives you some uh, simple instructions on how to run the VTX and how to run the receiver and everything like that, binding instructions. The VTX, we're using five second holds instead of two. Um, the R for race band on the LED looks kind of well, if you can see it flash, that is an R right there. <laughs> so it doesn't really look like an R, but that is an R. And the button for the VTX is right over here. If we hold in for five seconds, all right, now we get power, channel, no, wait a minute. We get band, channel, and power. And then you basically just select each one and change. So if we want to change the power, we can hold in on that. And now it's in low power, 25 milliwatts. Press the button, it goes into high power, 200. I'm going to leave mine at 25 because we're going to be doing some work on it. Hold it for five seconds to save it. And then hold it again for another five to 10 seconds to get it to all exit out. And that's it. Now we're back to everything that it should be. Now I'll go ahead and overlay some image on the goggles. This is how it comes set up um, right out of the box. You can see with the name, voltage timer, and the RSSI is working as well. So I've added a couple switches um, into my Tyrannus, my normal arming, beeper, those kind of switches. And we're going to go into beta flight now and get that all hooked up and take a look at how this thing is actually set up. 
Okay, so we are connected to the baby hawk here and we can see that we have the serial connection is actually set up on UART number three. So I'm doing this mostly just because if I ever reflash this thing, I want to make sure that uh, I know exactly what it, it came like. So it's running a 3.2.2 and the target is Omni. We're using Betaflight Configurator 10. Configuration, we're running 4K, 4K. Accelerometer is on. I'm turning that off. Don't want that. Uh, Baby Hawk R is the name. I'm going to put my call sign in there. We're set up the S bus. We've got all the different beeper stuff on dynamic filtering, anti gravity, OSD. Interesting enough, while well, we do we do have D Shot 600 and I'm not going to mess with the motor idle, even though I usually run a little bit lower. Um, we've got analog RSSI input going on, which is interesting. So we're going to save and reboot here. And we're going to reconnect and take a look at power and battery. Uh, of course, that is all set up as well. We got the onboard everything here with the Emac stack. Um, let's go into... Let's go to modes first and see what they have already set up. So basically they have arm and beeper turned on onto aux one and aux four. So I am okay with arm. I think I want to add turtle mode to this and that should be on aux 2 and my beeper should be on aux 3. Let me turn on my Tyrannus just to double check all that. Okay, so that's right. right Beeper is actually going to be two, and turtle mode will be on three. So adjust these sliders down a little bit and click on save. So I added the three switches. So we have arm on aux one beeper on aux 2 and then we have turtle mode on 3. So let's go into the receiver tabs and going to put my dead band up a little bit. Let's save. Need to put this on JR. Click on save and Looks like I have some sub trims and stuff to take care of. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so now I got all my sub trims set up pretty good. You can see that, um, you know, we're close to 1500 there in the middle. Uh, if we check roll, we're Right there at 996, 2000, pitch, 1000, 2000, y'all, 1000, and 2000. I don't know what's going on with my roll. It's off a little bit. You really want these to be as close as you can get, so that way you have the most stick resolution that you can have. So we'll just bump this up a couple of notches. Usually they usually each stick ends up being pretty much the same. So they're all off by the same amount. It usually has to do with gimbal wearing down and stuff like that, which these are M9 gimbals and they're not that old. So I don't really know why my trims are off so much right now. 
but you can see our RSSI is set up for channel number five. You can see that fluctuating right here. If I move the controller away, I'm getting a good RSSI. If I come right on top of it, it is going to, well, it did go bad. So anyway, all of our switches are all moving pretty good. So check our movement and everything looks uh, pretty good there. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. So we've done our modes, our motors. Now let's look at the OSD. So right now we'll start over here. I like to go ahead and set this to total arm time. I always click on save. I only need one timer. So we'll click on save. Um, I don't really mind the way things are kind of set up now. I'm going to plug in my goggles here and just kind of look and see where everything is. And I can probably move this stuff up a little bit. I don't really like it where it's at. It's kind of like right in the middle of my screen. I also usually put my craft name up here and I put my voltage down here and my timer usually it's kind of like a creature of habit here I'm going to set my timer right there because that's where I always have everything and I'm looking in my goggles and I can confirm that's all there um, they have the crosshairs on there I don't really want the crosshair so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to click on save also go in, going to go into font manager. I like using the bold font. I just think it makes everything look a lot better. And it always freaks out beta flight and resets everything. So yeah, that looks much better, easier to see. So let's go ahead and connect back up here. And let's look at the PIDs on this baby and see what they came up with. Um, let's see here, this, uh, let's look at the filters. Okay, PT1, both notches off, D-term is on, and if I'm not mistaken, these are all stock Betaflight PIDs. Yeah, those are all stock PIDs. So basically what they've done, which is something that I do all the time now, is you can get so much out of this D set point weight and D set point transition that sometimes you can just go ahead and leave this baby stock and just play with your rates and mess around with these down here to clean up bounce backs and stuff like that. Um, Inner gravity is set to one. I mean, it really doesn't weigh anything. TPA is at 0 0.10. Now, everybody says that this thing flies a little loose. So I'm guessing the reason why they say that is pretty loose is because with the set point weight of 1.5, it's at above one, it means that it's active. And if you read what it says over here, it actually means that it's going to follow the newer version of where it's going to track um, the stick in gyro and it's not just going to follow the PID loop. So basically this kind of setting here is going to mean that it's going to follow your D is and your stick movements are going to follow the PID loop and not really look at the gyro as much. And then the set point weight transition is that stick response that comes back to there. And if you kind of look at what it says here, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. But I have just found that this top one definitely makes a difference as far as how it flies. And this bottom one comes down to, to and the bottom slider bar 
gives you either a crisper or a faster response when you are coming back to center from your movements. So if you want to get those nice cinematic type of stuff, you're further down here. If you want snappier type of rolls at the end and snappier movements, then you're kind of higher up here. It is really one of those things that I've seen a bunch of people try to do a video on and try to explain, and you just cannot explain it without actually using it. The most important thing is to remember this slider up here is that anything less than one, it's not really working at all. Above one, you are changing and you are following the PID loop and you're not following the gyro as much. So very interesting what they're doing here. So the rates are pretty high, higher than I would fly. I usually fly an RC rate of one and a super rate around 0.77 to 0.8. So I guess I'm just going to have to wait for this polar vortex to leave and wait and see what happens. They also have VBAT PID turned on, which is interesting. I have yet to use it. So that's cool. We're just going to leave it like that because I want to see how everything works. So I'll just test the motors here real quick. Make sure everything spins and everything is spinning in the correct direction. Yes, it is. All right, so let's go check out uh, BL Heli real quick while we're in here. All right, so we're going to connect up the Baby Hawk to BL Heli and take a look at what we're looking at here, what they got flashed. And everything is running 16.6. There is a newer firmware available. 16.7 is available, but I am going to leave it all on 16.6 because I want to see how this baby flies before I do um, anything at all. Some people say that this doesn't matter, but I always like to set this just in case it does matter. It's in D-Shot, so you know shouldn't have to worry about nothing like that. I'm going to change my beacon delay to five minutes um, that way if I'm looking for this thing out there I don't have to worry about not finding it we will change my strength to 50 uh, low DMAG don't want program my TX on temperature protection is on low RPM uh, break on stop is not turned on so there's no active I believe break on stop is active right now So everything looks pretty good here in BL Heli then. I'm just going to write this setup. And that's going to be it there. So that's pretty much going to do it, guys. Everything is set up and configured and ready to go. I've got my batteries charged. I've got my props ready to go. Ready to get this baby outside and do some flying and see what is up. So stick around to the channel and you'll get to see it too. Later.